Hello and welcome to the Taskmaster podcast. Welcome back to the Taskmaster podcast. We had a small break, but we are now back because series 12 of Taskmaster has started. It's very exciting. An all new, brilliant lineup of Taskmaster. And we are going to be chatting about series 12, episode one. I am your host, Ed Gamble. As always, that will never, ever change, Richard Herring. Uh, today we will be speaking to the wonderful Mike Wozniak from Series 11 of Taskmaster and a bona fide Taskmaster mega fan. Uh, so we'll be chatting uh, to him all about Series 12 Episode 1 today. We're very excited. Uh, more exciting news, the brand new Taskmaster book, Bring Me the Head of the Taskmaster, is out now. You can go and buy it now. 101 next level tasks that will lead one lucky reader to some very special Taskmaster treasure. Are you up to the task? You can buy your copy now online or from your local bookshop. Go and get it. It's very, very exciting. But apart from that, just remember that Taskmaster new episodes are on Thursdays, 9pm on Channel 4, and you can catch up on all four afterwards. And this podcast will be dropping, yes, dropping, Every week, straight after the episode is released, and we'll be picking apart the episodes with a special guest. So let's get on with it. Series 12, episode 1, as told by myself, Ed Gamble, and Mike Wozniak. Mike Wozniak, welcome back to the Taskmaster podcast. Hello, Ed. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello. How the devil are you? I'm very well, thank you, mate. Uh, it's lovely to see you. I saw you at my wedding last week, um, dancing up a storm. I had, uh, I busted out some pretty fresh moves. Um, a couple of new ones that I thought I'd sample out, especially for you. That was that was my gift to you, was the gift of dance. I loved the gift of dance. It was uh, wonderful. You're the only person who I'd accept the gift of dance from, I'd say. <laughs> um, I think I came and grabbed you quite early in the evening to say, have you started dancing yet? And you said, it's it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> You've got to build up. You've got to build degree up. of pressure, basically. And I said, okay. And then I walked away, I came back, and I'd say 30 seconds later, you were flailing around. Yeah. Yeah, doing yeah. the full Wozniak dance move, which I've described before as one of those toys that you press the bottom of and then they go all wobbly. So, <laughs> <laughs> it was lovely to see. It it's was quite hard to do. It's a lot of pain the following day, uh, but it, it, it does feel worth it. Yes. Well, that yeah. I mean, that sums up your appearance on Taskmaster as well, I guess. <laughs> you throw yourself into everything you do uh, and there's a lot of pain the next day. Most of my life is recovery period. Really. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. A few it, short, sharp bursts of activity. <laughs> but it's worth it for those moments of exertion. I'm going to have a big uh, lie down. Yeah. <laughs> um, how's your how's your lie down been since since Taskmaster? The, how's the public reaction been since since your appearance on Taskmaster? I, I get... Um, if, so, if it ever does come up, uh, it, it, ten, it tends to get personal quite quickly, I would say. <laughs> I would say... If someone does approach me because they've watched the show and yeah, um, th then it's not to say, "Hey, you can have a selfie." It's please, t please tell me about the current status of your of your anus. Is what is what comes out. You know, I mean, that is your often fault. preceding hello. You know, yeah. I mean, it's straight. There's none of the nice niceties. It's, it's yeah. straight down to to brass tacks. Is it the lacasserole down there? Lovely to meet you. I <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. the order. That's the order of things. That's the order, yeah. Um, well, look, at least I've said hello first, and we've had yeah. a brief catch-up about dancing, etc. Yeah. And well now done. I'd like to move on to the question, <laughs> what's the current status of your <laughs> anus? Uh, I would say it's, it's, it's moved on from its kind of uh, chaotic jungle phase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and it's closer to a sort of home county's flower bed, but not oh, a very okay. well not a very well maintained one. I would say that's good. So at least we've moved it. We've moved it back to this country. Oh yeah, yeah, very much so. It's very not much, it's, a, it's not it's tropical a, it's a, anymore. It's a fully yeah. It's a temperate domestic yeah. anus. It wouldn't win any prizes, and when they come round to do village of the year, Mike Wozniak is not in bloom. No. <laughs> The bees go straight past it. They've got no interest whatsoever. <laughs> I think someone found a deflated football in there. Um, it's one of those, basically. But no child soldiers could be hiding in there. And that has no chance. They've been flushed out. Yeah. They've been rehabilitated. 
I'm pleased to say. Oh, good. I'm so glad. I think that's the perfect answer, really, that it's not as bad as it was, but it's still bad enough to be humorous. No one wants a full recovery, do they? No, no. one wants me to be fine, really. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> the day the day you announce that everything's fine down there is the day everyone unfollows you on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> when that episode came out uh, in, in the following days, there was... I did get a bit of criticism and a couple of comments from parents at the school gate who hadn't felt ready to explain to their children what what that was. So what so They've when been you say ambushed criticism, by they... the show. They just weren't ready. They I think they I think cuz you assume you're going to have to talk through certain things with your children, mm. you know, the birds and the bees that kind of stuff mm. and you assume that'll come at a certain age. I don't think anyone expects to have to explain to their child what yeah. might happen to a middle-aged man's ass. No one's no one's prepped pressure. for that chat, are they? And a lot of people, no... it's not the, the the vocab isn't there on the tip of your tongues. That you know, yeah. Not many people have the natural illustrating ability to to put it. Do you know? I'll just draw it for you. You know, it's, yeah. that's quite a tough thing to do. Um, There's no. It's the birds and the bees is fine. You know, everyone's prepped for that. There's no birds, bees, and vol with a hemorrhoid. <laughs> We're not here to talk about your ass all day, Mike. No, um, thank God. But we got a lot of emails about it. I requested emails uh, for you, um, and as expected, the majority of the emails were about your ass. Um, I feel <laughs> like we've covered that topic now. The rest of the emails were about you being fit, um, which I'm oh, not God. going to bring up because I don't, <laughs> I don't enjoy talking about my friends being attractive because it makes me feel less attractive. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, we are here to talk, of course, about series 12 of Taskmaster. Yeah. Is it a weird feeling, Mike, that you're no longer the fresh, hot new kid on the block? <laughs> I'm yesterday's news. Yes. That's okay, I think. I think I'm at a point in my life where I don't imagine for a second that anyone is remotely interested in what I'm doing or what I have to say. So the how, sort of fleeting... The fleeting bit of interest. I'm over that. The fleeting bit of interest was more of an anomaly, really. Mm. Uh, so I have more excitement. Having been a long-term fan of the show itself, I'm, I'm, I'm more jonesing to get, to get into the new series, I would say. Yeah. I'm just yeah. a little fanboy, really. That's the That's mode good. I'm in, mainly. There's certainly a couple of moments when I'm having watched this first episode of, oh, golly, it'd be nice to have, a, have another go. Yeah. Most definitely. I won't deny it for a second. But I think that's partly, that's the audience experience anyway, I think. I think it is the audience experience. I think you're right. But it is slightly different when you've done it yourself as well. It is that, it is that drug thing of you've had a taste. You're also, you also have a little bit of kind of, a little bit of relief that you are not being subjected to the ticking clock anymore. Yeah. So you can watch these things at your leisure and think what you might do and how you might go about these things. But you don't have suddenly someone saying, you've got 10 seconds to go. Well, exactly, yeah. And uh, I always thought when, before I did it, I would watch it and go, well, of course, do that. And because you've got the, mm. the benefit of time and, you know, you think, oh, you can think things through. And then obviously when I did it, I panicked most of the time. Um, <laughs> so I thought I would have more understanding when I watched other people do it that I could go, well, of course, they're panicking because of the time thing. But I've gone right back to being the smug guy sat at home <laughs> on the sofa being like, come on, guys. Zero empathy, through. despite being a battle-tested veteran. Exactly. I've found no empathy whatsoever. <laughs> nope. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Just judgment. Boring. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Rubbish idea. Think it through. <laughs> um, and there's plenty of those moments. The balloon is about. there. <laughs> there is the balloon. Idiot. It's, bright. it's right in the middle of the frame. Can't you see? It's right in the middle of the telly. Where I'm Turn around, at. Victoria. <laughs> um, let's talk. Let's talk about the new lineup because it is always exciting uh, when there's a new lineup of Taskmaster announced, and I was very excited with this one uh, yeah. specifically. Um, I mean, let's let's go through it in in seat order. Okay. Uh, working from uh, left to right as we're looking at it as viewers. Um, Alan Davis. Very exciting to see him on the show, Mike. Absolute delight. Big fan of the man and have been for a very long time. And that's, I think that's particularly lush 
when you've got because they're always very good at getting someone in there that you've known for a very very long time yeah and maybe you've seen them interviewed and you've seen them do this and that and you've seen them as themselves but you haven't you haven't seen them in the taskmaster house exactly see how it all pans out and i love I, I love i love what he's bringing to it already i love it yeah I mean, he's because he's he's got this lovely it's coming across as a there's a degree of comfort he seems like a man who's got to a point in life where he's got quite a good he's, well, he's got a very good body of work behind him yeah we know he's funny we know he's great uh but he's got he's got nothing to prove and he's there on his own terms i think someone like that there's no there's, i don't think there's anyone in his life who could have forced him to have done it i mean lee was forced into it by his children that was an exception <laughs> but he had a good time but I, I can't see that there's anyone who's made him oh you really should do this show you know because you know he doesn't yeah he doesn't, was very i purely I on I did, his own terms yeah i did a gig with Alan a while ago I think when he was being asked to do it and there are a couple of us there who had done it and he he was asking whether whether he should do it but he seemed very laid back about it yeah um and he continues to be laid back uh but I mean Greg absolutely nails him to the wall in this episode (laughs) it's Greg always picks up on stuff pretty quickly and sort of establishes people's characters but I think this is the quickest he's ever done it with all of them uh, well, he I also think... he goes in hard. I think with the with the older crowd, he yeah. himself is someone who has had moments of dwelling on the hopelessness of of middle yeah. age. Yeah, and, for sure. Uh, and if he if he can smell that on someone else, you know, yeah, he'll, he'll he'll attack. He's attacking himself by attacking Alan. He's he's attacking his own yes, terrible. Exactly. What now? You know, uh, thoughts. Yeah, it'll all be over soon anyway. What's the point? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, and it's wonderful to watch Alan, a man who I was first introduced to as Jonathan Creek, the incredibly uh-huh. uh, intelligent uh, magician's assistant slash detective, yeah. um, working out all the different ways that crimes are done. Incredibly the lateral thinking genius, lateral yeah. thinking genius, master and of the what- locked room mystery. Yeah, and-, and there he is, rolling up and down a corridor, <laughs> struggling to find a, a paintbrush. <laughs> Can't find a paintbrush. Oh, Jonathan. <laughs> oh, Jonathan Creek. Um, Desiree Birch. Great, a great choice for Taskmaster, I think, Desiree. Yeah, she's full of beans, isn't she? Oh, yeah. Very funny, very, very funny, funny woman. And you kind of, I think you need you need someone with that sort of a balance and that energy in in the room. Totally. She again just, she again just, she's she's like someone who's on, she's like someone who's on cracking form at a party. Really, I don't quite. She to the point where you wonder whether or not she realizes that she's being filmed and it's part of a television. Yeah, so, there's, there's quite. She just seems very relaxed. They're all mostly quite, there to have a good yeah. time. I think, but I think that's what's good about this lineup, even from the first episode, is they are all quite relaxed, but also trying their hardest, and they're there to have a good time. There's no one. There's no sort of Ed Gamble style characters who, through their eyes, just scream, "I need this to go well." <laughs> there's no bloody tryhards. No, no, exactly. There's no real desperate saddos. <laughs> Which is lovely I to watch. Must win. Yeah, I want exactly. that head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need that head. Please like me. Please let me win. <laughs> Please like me. Um, Guz Khan, who as soon as I heard was doing this, I was very, very excited. Uh, oh, he's so funny. He's so, he's one of the most naturally funny people out there. I think. I think just he's anything he says makes me laugh. Yeah. And it happens in this first episode straight away. He gets asked to do things and just turns into a small boy. He's like a cheeky little boy. Yeah, which is which was slightly unexpected because I don't know him well. Our paths have crossed once or twice. I know yeah. his work, and he's he's just so funny. But in, in his work, he's quite you know he's he's self possessed. Yes, he has. Yeah. He's he's assured, and he's you know there's exudes a kind of confidence. But that, that yeah, there's this lovely childish playfulness that's that's creeping out already. Straight away, away in the in the in the prize task as well. I mean, we'll we'll get to it. We'll go through. But he gets caught out yeah. straight away by Greg, and he it, it just turns <laughs> into teacher and student immediately. Yeah. But like kindergarten teacher and student. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Morgana. Now I did not know what to expect from Morgana. Spoiler warning: I think she's absolutely amazing after watching this first episode. Because obviously I've seen her do, you know, impressions and character stuff before. I'd not seen her do anything as herself before, and she, she's an, <laughs> she's an I've absolute got, whirlwind. I've got I've got Mog bias here. Yes, because she she's of of the class. She's the one that I I know. Yes, and I've spent an awful lot of time with her in the corner of like rehearsing rehearsal yeah. rooms, and bloody hell! I mean, I, she's she's one of the small handful of people that just 
so funny in person. Yeah. My God. I mean, I, I basically, because it took weeks, this show to make. There's loads of rehearsing. I just spent hours in the corner of a room just being entertained by her, basically. She's so funny. So yeah. much fun. I'm very fond of her. And it, yeah, it came as no surprise that she was a little merchant of chaos. Yeah. From, from the get-go. Well. Yeah, she's, she's so good. Brilliant. I can't wait to see what she does in the rest of the series. Um, and Victoria Corrin Mitchell, perhaps I think the, maybe the contestant that everyone was most excited about online when they announced the lineup. Oh, really? Um, I think so, yeah. I think people have been asking for her for a long time. Because uh, they wanted to see how she'd break it all down because she's got yeah. a sort of fairly mighty noggin, hasn't she? Yes, she has. Um, and it's very... I was excited to see her because she, she really sticks sticks to her guns on stuff. She won't back down. Um, and I, I think, think she's going to be a really good adversary for Greg totally. as well in the studio because she won't. She doesn't seem like she's necessarily going to take any of his his no, shit. Absolutely not. And he, so I think, he will be terrified by her. <laughs> <laughs> He's not terrified by many people, but I think he will be absolutely perplexed and baffled by by things Victoria says. Yeah, because he'll go up against people. He's not yeah. shy of a bit of conflict. Oh, yeah. You know, like, say, with Jamali, he'll go up against them. But eventually, I mean, that, that turned into a sort of, you know, a beautiful budding Yes, friendship. exactly. There was respect By the there. end. The thing, yeah. But the thing is with, like, Jamali, Jamali versus Greg, they're both sort of reaching uh, to, for the same toolbox. Yeah. They both got ah. quick wit. They're both quite sort of masculine energies, I'd say. Yeah. I mean... Victoria's toolbox compared to Greg's toolbox. Greg's toolbox is just, he opens it up and a fly comes out. Like <laughs> Victoria is going to run rings around him. Yeah. By comparison, his toolbox is, yeah, it's a little sort of child's, sort of four-year-old's yeah. it's a crack, play toy it's box from a cracker. with a couple yeah. of pieces missing because you got yeah. it from a charity shop and the spanner's broken. <laughs> and over the years, the, the tools have fallen out. <laughs> Okay, let's get on. Let's get on with the with the prize tasks. Mm. Uh, the prize task was the thing that if you put in a bag and sat on it, it would feel the nicest. Bang! We're kicking off with a big one. Um, <laughs> it's... And it was very strong all round. I thought I really liked what they uh, came up with here. Yes, and I, I mean, obviously, the the instinct is to go with something rude mm-hmm. or something sort of uh, something to do with onanism, something within that. That right. field, I think. Um, uh, I mean, Alan did that straight away, I think. Uh, an inflatable cushion with an electric toothbrush. He edged towards it, didn't he? There was, the, there was, there a, was hint a suggestion. Of, the there was a hint of the lewd, but, it, but, you know, but equally, the way he sold it, it could quite easily have been taken the other way. You know, he, well, no court in the me. land could convict. He could, no. he could quite easily <laughs> pretend, no, it's just like one of those little buzzing chairs that you see in a service station. It's, it's a massage yeah. thing. It's nothing Yeah, sexual, but we all have all. a wank on those, don't we, when we've had a long drive? <laughs> We all put. We all love to put a quid in that chair and <laughs> and go to town. Um, I think it's a great. It is a great start. He's thought about it. I bet it does feel nice. Um, yeah. He takes the piss out of Greg straight away. He goes straight in with the with the lip, and Greg seems to relax. I think it's fine. I think Greg, he seems to get away with it with Greg. I think what did he respect. say that was lippy? I'm trying to remember what he said that was lippy. To... I think Greg questioned him on it and he just went, no, come on, mate, think it through. He was oh, like... Oh, God, he asked him about which, yeah, the orientation of the toothbrush. Didn't yeah. yeah, obviously. <laughs> so anyway, on on place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a lovely, a lovely start from Alan. Uh, Desiree, the chicken fillet boob enhancers. With the statement, the most comfortable thing in the world is boobs. I mean, that's just a piece of perfection. Almost that yeah. should be in the dictionary under yeah. <laughs> under the word comfort. Yes, it was, I think, a, an incredibly sound premise. Everyone uh, can get on board with that idea. I you think, know, yeah. No matter who you are in the world, what age you are, yeah. you know, whatever you're, whatever you're into. Yeah, boobs are boobies, comfy. Boobs are comfy, everyone knows this. Nothing's, there's it's nothing, there doesn't have to be anything sexual about it. Boobs are comfy. Yeah. You know. <laughs> in fact this is the least the least sexual one in a way i'd say oh she takes um, the sex right out of it by then yeah. presenting us with a sort of bag of sort of weird sort of rubber chicken fillets or so this is my issue with it i think right. the premise is sound mm-hmm. but then because they a, weren't boobs they weren't boobs they were boob, boob replace it's boob replacement technology but i don't know how much comfort you would get from sitting on a bag of what you knew to be real <laughs> 
severed boobs. Sure. Let's, te- let's not, well, I mean, I, and no matter how comfortable it. the actual physical seat is, I think there's going to be, there's a mental... Well, you don't have there. to sever them. You could put loads of women in a bag. <laughs> but again, I think we've moved past that age, Ed. That's 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 your patriarchal streak talking there. You yeah, I'm just trying to anymore. think of a way of getting real boobs into the bag. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think I think it's a sound premise, but the reality of the chicken fillet boobs is not that's not that's not nice to sit on. I don't think it. So you would have penalised. I wouldn't have, have given her the five points definitely, right, okay. but I would have maybe given her three for a solid. But all sound Greg heard was the word boobs, and he was well, like, "We've got, yeah, a, we've got, got a winner here." Yeah. yeah, he glazed over it's at that not point, listening. didn't he? Listen to anything else anyone is saying for the rest of the round. <laughs> yeah, but it was be. a good. It was a good start. It shows that Desiree is thinking about it. She's uh, she's attacking it from the right angles. Yeah. Um, Gus brought a chair in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Huge fan which of did this. make me. Which did make me laugh. Yeah. And then I saw the picture of the chair, and it was yeah, it was clearly just yeah. the chair from there. And- Possibly he'd forgotten that he was supposed to do a task or... Yes. I mean, he'd probably not answered the emails. They'd probably been pursuing him for a number of weeks. <laughs> Which and makes then he me wonder what else, what else oh, is going to happen in the future. What tasks else he's he had to bring in. Yeah. How else is he going to use that chair? Um, <laughs> but this is the point Greg challenged him and said, tell me the truth. Did you just panic and say that chair is going to go in the bag? And, and he fessed up. There would have been other contestants who would have argued the toss at this point. Yeah. I think, but Greg went full you teacher, know, didn't he? I, I think, think he had yeah. To I think up. Sarah Kendall, for example, she would have argued the toss. And oh, she yeah. Tried to defend the position, and yeah. But Gus just, you know, just and, but, and Sarah won. You know, that's maybe that's what you've got to do. I don't. Maybe. I hate to call it this early, but maybe maybe Gus isn't a victor victor in this scenario. <laughs> um, bearing in mind, he's kicking off his Taskmaster campaign with a chair in a bag. <laughs> um, Morgana. Yeah, I think I'm happy to say categorically on the record. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Gaz is going to be glorious, but he is he's not going to win. He's not going to win. Yeah. Um, Morgana brought in uh, a washing machine on the spin cycle. I um, like this very much. So another we've got another perv on our hands. Yeah. Um, yes, I like this. I like the way she sold it. Yeah. I, having never, uh, like I say, never really sort of interacted with Morgana or seen her do anything as herself, immediately... The way she presents things, I'm on board with in the studio. Quite sort of soft and she gentle the way she presents it, but with authority as well. Oh, there's uh, authority. You know, when he when he picked her up on, you know, well, how long are you going? You know, five to ten. You know, she knew the answer. You know, that would do. She knows. Uh, I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to <laughs> pick you up on the way you delivered that. It wasn't five to ten. Mm-hmm. It was five ten. <laughs> It made me laugh so much. No one's ever said it like that before. Five ten. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely loved it. Thrown away, but so certain at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Joyous, pure joy. Uh, and Victoria brought a bag of See, diamonds. I really like that. This I is really great. Like, I really like that idea. I thought that was really nice. She's thought that through. She's thought that oh, through. My God, yes, of course. Even if they're digging into your your butt. I mean, the it's level the of comfort, comfort of you long-term could, I could travel financial. for hours in that way. Just <laughs> yeah, a big bag of diamonds under you. I really liked it, and I think that's exactly what people are excited about Victoria for. Yeah, is doing things in quite a clever, uh, logical way, um, but tripping everyone else up. And no, no one else thought to do this. No. Um, and then even when Greg said, "Oh, so you've brought, you've got a big bag of diamonds, have you? That you brought in?" And then there's just no bullshit from her. Just, no, of course, <laughs> of course, I haven't. At the point when other people might cower, yeah, and, or or bluff, yeah. try and pretend that they have done it. Say there's been a problem, something got lost on the way to the studio. No, of just shoots not. the man down, <laughs> shoots down, shoots down the taskmaster. So the, I yeah. I had issues with the scoring on this one immediately. I mean, we because there weren't real boobs in the bag. I don't think it deserved mm-hmm. the five points. I thought Victoria's was cl- really clever. Yeah. I felt like that deserves a five points just for how clever it was. Personally, the others perhaps scored scored correctly. I probably would have been with you on, on that. I probably also would have scored scored Morgana higher. Yes. As well. Yeah. But as we've Solid discussed start. previously, Ed, the scores, of course, are really a complete irrelevance. Yes. You keep saying this. You don't believe me. Well, it, undermine, it does undermine the podcast somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> and your world view. And my worldview. And my, wor- and my world view. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I'll, I'll, I won't say that again. I'll play the game. 
<laughs> what have you brought in? I brought in a spinning washing machine, but it's got to be on spin, not just any old washing machine, but it's okay. got to be, you know, on vibrate for the last bit. And we can see it spinning right now, Greg. Okay. Yeah, see, there it goes. That's going to... Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got one. Same vibe. Same uh, vibe. Same a little vibe. bit less subtle, I think, Morgana, but there you are. I put it to you. It's a hugely uncomfortable seat. I just think it's a bit like... I mean, I'm not saying I want to spend all night on it, but how I long, think... How long do you want to spend on it? Five, ten? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to give me bum problems. Do you really think... I think it's going to tighten everything up. It isn't. I think it's going to do the opposite. I think it's going to work things out that I wouldn't want work. <laughs> <laughs> so, task one. Oh, Stri straight out of the gates with this. Straight Lovely. Straight out of the gates. I love it. Strike Alex with a ball. Alex may not run, hide, or leave the Taskmaster grounds. Fastest wins. It's high energy. Big it's time big. high energy. And, and well, for, well, yes, you would think for most high energy, but, yeah, but then you've got Alan. Oh. <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Appar apparently looking for a man in the cupboard, and then, no, no, yeah. he's after a little snack, isn't he? Quick, quick check in the cupboard, sees the snacks, can't wait to get <laughs> stuck in. Reminiscent of uh, Series 9, uh, the series um, I was on, uh, the team task with Joe Brown and David Baddiel, um, where, oh God, they were, a they were on a, where they were on a, a sort of choose your own adventure uh, task around the house, uh, yeah. and they stopped for a cup of tea. Um, <laughs> And a, and a little sandwich. It was lovely I, to watch. I um, love those uh, two so much. Yep. Uh, and Alan has very much the same energy there, except there's no one there egging him on to do that. He just, he just <laughs> stops for a snack and immediately establishes himself uh, as a tired old man. Um, but also a, cha a champion in his own right, I think. You know? Yeah. He's a champion to his own... No one's yeah, the boss of that man. To you know? his own values, yeah. He's in a race against time. And he stops for a snack. No one... I mean, that's it's the ultimate status move. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, amazing. I mean, basically, they establish very quickly at the top that it, putting a camera just hovering above someone's face is always funny, no matter whose face it is. <laughs> Helmets are funny as well. Helmets I mean, you put, are funny. The combination of the two. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, I, there's no way of looking cool or sexy. No. With a camera position just there above your face, is there? Everyone looks <laughs> hilarious. Um, so yeah, as we say, Alan Alan really took his time. Uh, he managed to get to Alex in ten minutes twenty two seconds. As I was watching this, my first thought was: first thing you do, you got to screw up the task, and that's your ball, right? Oh, nice. That's quite tasty. I wouldn't have thought of that. Well, again, I'm saying this from the perspective of an audience member. My concern is, I would have thought that. I was already standing in what looks like a giant ball, and I would have tried to roll the, roll the whole of, thing, the whole plastic igloo off the <laughs> off the floor, and would have caused myself a mischief. Yeah, I have another down. hemorrhoid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the the yeah the plastic ball would have been splattered from the inside. It would have been awful. <laughs> yes, I didn't think about that. That yeah, someone should have tried to roll the entire biodome off its off its mm. uh, harness and thrown that at Alex. Um, no, I would have tried to have gone task. Um, but you just need to attack this task with as much fury and as much energy as you can. I mean, Guz did, but he didn't do that well. He only got the two points. But Guz he was shouting crackling, Alex's but yeah. name over yeah. and over again is so funny. <laughs> it was very funny. Alex! Yeah, uh, Mog was the gold standard here. Yeah. Yes. Similarly, just just absolutely went for it. Hell for love. Oh God, she was so good. This is straight out the gate. This is brilliant. Yeah. Little bastard when she read the task, and little fucker when she was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and a bonus point a man. for that. She looked like she's chased a man before, chased oh, them yeah. down, taken them down. You know. God, yeah. The bin was genius. Putting the bin in front in, of the. In that was a the lovely touch. Door. Yeah, yeah, which great. complete. I mean, it, yeah, slowed him right down. And he's not a he's not an aggressive man. No, as our little Alex. So he's not gonna. If that was Greg, he was chase. She was chasing. Then I think he would have just kicked his way clean through it, probably yeah. killing a sound recorder just in the same incident. <laughs> I mean, it's, it says a lot about gin me. Gingerly goes past the thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just sort of scoots around it, and that was that was his downfall there. Um, mm -hmm. It says a lot about me that when she put that bin out, I was like, oh, I hope he trips over it. I hope he doesn't see it. And he trips. Over it. <laughs> If there's a serious accident. Yeah, that'd be really yeah, Maybe there could be actually. a crossover episode with 999 with Michael Burke. Yeah. That'd be amazing, <laughs> wouldn't it? Brilliant. I hope this is the first and last episode of this series. Because <laughs> Alex gets so badly injured. 
Um, yeah, she was absolutely amazing. <clears throat> Great performance from from Desiree as well. Uh, again, we've got a real real contender there. I think this first task marks Morgana and and Desiree out as proper proper contenders for this series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Victoria, uh, the first sort of we had Victoria being very interesting and funny in the task they bring in, but this one was the first time where she was, had a little bit of a moment rereading the rules and going, hmm, hang on. Mm. He's yeah. hiding, or is he hiding? Or I well, he seems to think it's me. okay, right, okay. You could see something sort of. You could see the synapses crackling away, going. Yeah. Mm, right. Okay. Okay. Touche, young man. Okay. <laughs> I see you. Your filthy little rules. But that is that, that is you. interesting. Yeah. The definition of hiding. Because mm. I mean, Alex makes the good point that he says he's not hiding because all he did was go to a different place. Mm. But if you are going to a different place with the express intention of not being not in being detected of else, by the person who is yeah. looking for you, <laughs> <laughs> surely that's high. That is hiding, isn't it? Well, I think you could argue that very strongly. But yes, and Alex, Alex knows that as well as anyone. Yeah, and Alex is quite happy to allow people to be infuriated by exactly yeah. that. Yeah, and even not- though he might get in trouble with Greg for it. Yeah, and even though he might get in trouble with you know, whichever of the consult, whichever of the contestants is a bit more analytical. <laughs> I'll yeah. tell you what would have happened if I was doing this task. Mm. I would have pitched that argument to them in the studio for about ten minutes. I would have shouted at them and said, "Well, he was hiding because he left an area <laughs> with the express intention of not being seen yeah. by me or not being found by me." So that you'd that have found legal precedents. Uh, yeah. From, yeah, various 10 to 15 cases. minutes shouting and screaming while they just yeah. stared at me uh, and yeah. then that would have all been taken out in the edit yeah. so that's Absolutely. that's what would have yeah. happened <laughs> it would have just looked like you'd said nothing yeah yeah <laughs> i'm just rolled over like a pathetic worm <laughs> um victoria instantly looked about seven as well i mean her and guz she just as soon as she put that helmet on and she had to go and find a ball she looked so she looked so like like a little girl yeah um and then throws well, the ball she even the first evoked, time. sort of uh, her previous yeah sort of school i think she said something like i haven't done this much exercise in school yeah exactly yeah she, she went wondered right if back there were some sort of dark memories of cross yeah. country you know <laughs> freezing and cold then, legs and yeah muddy knees what made me laugh the most is she finally found a ball Missed him and then apologised. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> why are you sorry, Victoria? <laughs> you didn't hit she a just, man with a ball. She'd committed an aggressive act. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what she came over a, me. She was appalled <laughs> by what she'd already become. Um, so it was uh, an amazing performance from uh, from Morgana. Six points for her because she got a bonus point. For little fucker, Greg feeling very generous in that scenario. Mm. Um, I don't think I've seen him do something like that before. It's the sort of move where, had it happened in a later episode, would have been highly provocative. I yeah, think we're in episode one, so no one, no one can, no one contested that. But I can imagine yeah. if he'd Oof. thrown it up later on, there would have been protests. Yeah, you know, I, would, I mean, I would have gone mad. You would have, yeah, you would, would have taken it out the really well at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Desiree, four points. Uh, Victoria, three points. Guz, two points. Alan, one point. <laughs> and he does not care. <laughs> He's going to be fine. Yeah, he'll be all yeah. right. He's got a tuna pasta bacon in the oven when he gets home. <laughs> Definitely. That's, He'd be all right. That's exactly what he's got in the oven. <laughs> Ali! Yeah? Ali? Yeah? Ali? Yeah? Attention passengers, we are extremely excited to announce a major rail disruption. This is due to the launch of Lumo, a new way to travel between London and Edinburgh. We are severely sorry that you may travel more comfortably and for a fair price on a service that prioritises your ease well-being and carbon footprint as standard. Book your tickets now at lumo.co.uk and travel well beyond expectations. All aboard the 2032 train from Humdrum Junction to Party Central. Loungewear off, glad rags on. The night is young and the friendship's old. Belly laughs again. Back on the dance floor again. Properly out, out again. 
Nothing reconnects us to the people, places and things we love like rail. Let's get back on track. Um, task two. Straight in with the portrait task. Paint the most flattering picture of the Taskmaster in action uh, on the canvas in the lab. The canvas will either be six inches or six feet above you. You must lie flat on your back on the creeper at all times. You have ten minutes. You must tell Alex if you want the canvas to be six inches or six feet above you in the next ten seconds. Um, great. A really, a really good portrait task, I think. the choice. These are ones that I really enjoy watching. Any sort of arts and crafts thing always made me feel sick with dread because I have no ability. But watching them, I, I love. Watching yeah. them. And the choice of the six inches, six six feet thing. Great. I mean, poor Victoria there because she's, she's clearly analytical. Yeah. But the trouble is, if you're analytical, there's, there's two problems being analytical in Taskmaster. One is analytical thinkers are used to having time yes. to analyse. You don't have that here. They're also used to having any sort of usable information. Yeah. To their lives. <laughs> and also, so, yeah, if there's a choice. Neither here. So if there's a choice, with a choice no she advantage. knows there's some significance yeah. to it. Yeah. <laughs> she can't work out what it is. She knows there's a catch somewhere. It turns yeah. out it is it's just, yeah, it's just really high. It's just ludicrous. It's just too high. It's is what too it is. high. And there might be some the thing holes is, somewhere, but you're going to have difficulty finding them. It's difficult to analyse something when the person writing the choice had no real answer to it so there's no <laughs> there's no analytical thinking really gone into the writing of the task alex has just gone well let's see what they pick and let's see what they come probably out look quite stupid doing this yeah, yeah so probably look quite stupid so this yes. one's in yeah <laughs> so victoria said six feet uh morgana desiree and guys went with six inches and alan as gray pointed out went with six feet but i i think that's because that was the option he could remember Oh yeah, completely, completely arbitrary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter either way. Yeah, six feet. What? I wasn't listening. But I'll say six feet. I can't what, yeah. So what? A, sandwich? I don't know. Okay, six feet. I'll go for the big one. Sounds good. But then um, he did a magnificent job. I loved I mean, his painting. Yeah. Alan's was great. It was a lovely interpretation of Greg. They had to go with flattering. I think that's the sort of thing that Greg is flattered by, mm. um, because he looked quite scary, quite resplendent. He looked like he's in. A character from the West End uh, production of The Lion King, right? Yeah. Sort of a one of the bad an interpretation guys, yeah. of a of a jungle animal. Yeah, um, on fire. Yeah, it was love. I thought that was that was magnificent. I think Alan's relaxed nature, yeah, sort of saved him here because he wasn't, yeah, probably With wasn't particularly conscious of the ticking clock. Just thought, no. oh, I've got to paint a thing. I don't know. Well, it we does. Go. It does come out. Uh, <laughs> he does come out with, I think, the quote of the episode, which is. Um, 10 seconds to give a man a soul. <laughs> it was just so lovely. And I think he, I think he managed it. He got that, he got that soul. Yeah, he really did. Um, yeah, that was complete. That was triumphant. The six inches uh, all did okay. I mean, Guz made the great choice to not use a brush. Mm. I think that was the key there was to use the finger and stay very calm. Um, and I, I think I think that, that came out looking pretty well. Made the choice of um, giving Greg a big a big reefer, <laughs> which is interesting, as if it could be misinterpreted. Uh, it, just in case it wasn't misinterpreted, um, he did write um, weed next to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did a good job. He understands he with Taskmaster. Yeah, you're gonna if you're comfortable with the idea of getting mucky now and again. You know, yeah, getting some paint in your eyebrows, or and also else sometimes is, you don't need okay. to use everything. If there's Indeed. a lot of stuff around, there's a lot of stuff in that house. You don't need to use everything. You'll get yourself in a little pickle. Um, <laughs> so just using the finger, I think, was a, was a great choice, and it came. Make out. a choice, stick to it. Yeah, exactly. Um, Desiree, and another interesting the, to bring in the myth of Narcissus. Oh, this was the Narcissus one, of course. Yes. In the studio. Yeah, was... she showed that she had some uh, pretty sweet bullshit skills. Yeah. Which I was quite excited about. Because, I, I I mean, that's the sort of thing that could be readily deployed throughout the series. Totally. And could be the sort of thing that all that time has really wind up the Taskmaster. Yes. Sometimes he'll buy it, sometimes he won't. But I I sort of, I sort of lusting after, after moments when, when it might really trigger him, you know, yeah. and, and set him off. I'd li- I would like to see... How a conflict between those two went, you know. I mean, Desiree's got got him handled. 
I think I suspect so. And I think that's why I want it, because I think I'd like to see that. I mean, with Desiree and Victoria. This could be the first series where he truly gets his ass handed to him. Yes, I think it is. But also, that makes me fear for Alan, because I think he's going to take out a lot of he needs frustrations on Alan. Yeah. He's gonna, Alan's just going to end up a husk <laughs> by the end. <laughs> but then he might try, and Alan doesn't care, so he's not going to get anything back from that. Maybe it's Gus who's in for the, in the firing line. But... Um, Desiree's, Desiree's myth of Narcissus was lovely and really shook Victoria when she had to talk about hers. Um, <laughs> I don't think Victoria was expecting such a highbrow a highbrow lineup. Um, let's talk about Morgana's quickly before we get to Victoria. I mean, Morgana's was dreadful. What was Morgana's? It, well, it was supposed to be uh, Greg playing football and scoring a goal. Oh, it was the football one, yeah. But he yeah, sort of looked was... like a tribal mask and then it was sort of... It was bad. It was, it was piss poor. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you can say about it, really. Luckily, she got that bonus point. I think if she had called, if she had called Alex a little fucker while she was doing it, I'm sure yeah. uh, that, would have been, that would have been way it better. It was piss poor, but... but I have great sympathy with that because if I had been in the same situation, then there's, there's no way I would have been able to offer anything other than something piss poor. Yeah. A totally <laughs> rudimentary, basic kind of stick man level... Then a circle. Oh, it's a. <laughs> it's and a you wouldn't football. have. The thing is with you as well is you wouldn't have argued it. So. I would have felt you, that I you, deserved poor points. Yes. But yeah, because I, I mean, as soon as these tasks start, I know I'm going to execute this badly. And yeah. I, I, should, I should be punished for that. Exactly. Whenever you did something badly, which was, I think, pretty rare, whenever Greg would come to you and say, What have you done here? You'd just go, Yeah, ha- hands up. <laughs> hands up, I've done a bad job there. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Just like um, that, was it? It was just like that. I'm sorry, I hold my hands up. I feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone mad. Um, <laughs> Victoria, I mean, this is of the first full meltdown of the series, right? It was what? crushing, because she's got... I mean, I don't know I don't know the woman a- at all, but she, she clearly is academic, and she's... I would, I would guess that she's someone who is used to, when presented with a task doing it quite well. Yeah. You know, this is someone who when sat down for an exam in her past has prepared for that exam. Yeah. And has then performed very yeah. well in that exam. And here she had a time limit and she had a task. And you could see this heart sinking moment of it's like when a kid gets to the end of an exam for GCSEs and they they realize they've they've written, they filled in the wrong question. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they, they did Romans and they didn't realise that if they turned the page, there was the question about the Greeks. There was yeah, the question about yeah. the Greeks. Oh, no! <laughs> she, she, had, she had that look on her face. Like, I yeah, can't believe someone who's oh, arrived no, at Surely, there. can I get to try again? There's been, a, there's been a terrible mistake. There's been a terrible mistake. Come on, start again. Please. Um, yeah, she's turned up to her Latin exam and it turns out she has to fill it in from six feet away. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, I mean, how did she only manage that in 10 minutes? She's absolutely screwed that up. It was great. It was just what a ten squiggles. minutes that must have been because we only we got we just got bit snippets of it, of course. Yeah. But I mean, that would be I could imagine that being quite a hit if that went on YouTube. Just that ten minutes of a because there must an be erudite, intelligent yeah. woman falling to pieces on a trolley trying to look for a stick. But looking for the stick and then finally it's like getting... it's because... a metaphor for life, isn't it? Really, Ed? Yeah. We're all just on a trolley We're all... looking for a big stick. <laughs> <laughs> and then we finally get the stick and our time's up. <laughs> Um, it felt like fair scoring to me. I know it, it, this is obviously like up to up to Greg, but um, obviously one point for Victoria, two points for Morgana, three points for Desiree, four points oh, for Alan, five fair. points for Gus. I think that's pretty I think much. Alan's probably was my my fave. But yeah, that could have that could have won. That's you know they both they both got high scores there, well deserved. You know, yes, good on them. And Victoria definitely deserved that one point. <laughs> We talked about Gus not setting himself up as the potential winner. I feel like, I feel like Victoria might have done the same in this episode, but you never know. Um, I think she's going to come back hard. Yeah. Man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I um, think I think she's a she's a tasty contestant. She's she's potential winner material. I think. Okay. Well, there's one left. It's sort of the minimal approach. Uh, this is Victoria's painting. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Victoria. <laughs> You've got to dig deep. We're here for ten weeks. I don't know if my self-esteem was going to survive this series. I... Desiree did the myth of Narcissus. <laughs> I couldn't do it with her face. That would be 
might be more like me if you'd just fallen into it. <laughs> Task three, pop the balloon. Oh, I love this. This yeah, was so good. pure joy. You must stay behind the rope at all times. You must not move the rope. Uh, you may buy the tools you need with time. Fastest wins. Time starts when Alex uh, has shown his tool shop. Uh, and obviously we've got stones um, uh, and a slingshot. Uh, there's forks. There's darts. Free ducks. Rock ducks. Free ducks, of course. Uh, and the portcullis <laughs> scissors, which are uh, eight minutes. So that's the big decision, really, isn't it? Um, do you just go straight in with the scissors? Which I think <laughs> it emerged was probably the right thing to do. Yeah, and there we go. Alan, uh, you know, reached a point in life where he, he knows himself. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's a hugely powerful tool in life yeah. to to know your your strengths and indeed your shortcomings. And he knows, probably, inherently, that he's not very good at throwing forks at a balloon from yeah. a distance of eight feet <laughs> or whatever the distance was. <laughs> He did that in an episode of Jonathan Creek, of course. Exactly, he's covered it. Yeah, they had to get a stuntman in. It was very expensive. It delayed filming by a full day. The fork and the balloon. Yeah. (laughs) He missed the balloon and the fork stuck in Caroline Quentin's head. And and from that moment on, he said, I'm not doing it. (laughs) We don't know what immediately preceded it. It may, because you wait around between tasks. It may be that immediately before they called him for the task, he just made himself a a lovely cup of Lapsang Souchong. We don't know. (laughs) He was worried about that getting cold. It doesn't yeah. revive very well in the microwave. So maybe you thought, I'll tell you what, I'll just snip this. I'll in get this out. one out of the way and then I'll go and have a lovely cup of tea. Off in we go. and out. I loved it. Um, but he enjoyed it as well. That's the. I think that's part of the magnificence of the man already. He loved it. He's not, he didn't do that. It didn't seem like he did that to, to win the task. It didn't seem calculated or bloodless. Yeah. He just thought, well, I'll get this out of the way, but. This does look quite fun, doesn't it? Snipping a thing yeah. with a big pair of scissors. Oh, thank you. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> um, it goes. Very Happy. frustrating, though, to watch Alan pick up the big scissors mm. in a timed then... task and then spend approximately a minute just chopping the air <laughs> and having a go with the scissors before Well, that's he what I mean. Them. If you'd done that, if you'd made that choice, you'd have picked up those scissors and you, in a single movement you'd have picked them up and yeah. snipped the string and probably taken string. a chunk off Alex at the same time. Yeah, stabbed Alex to death. Yeah, that would have been... <laughs> But yeah, just just having a go with the scissors. Yeah, he uh, wanted to get the feel of them, you know, get the weight of them, you know, wandered about, turned yeah. in a full circle at some point for some reason. So what should have been eight minutes, one second mm. was nine minutes because he uh, <laughs> he wanted to get a feel for the motion of the scissors. Yeah. Um, extremely frustrating. Uh, he may be, it's, I mean, perhaps he's the least competitive creature to ever... Step possibly. into the Taskmaster house. I think Could that, be. that's possibly true. <laughs> um, Victoria uh, uses the darts, um, but gets her gets her eye in with the ducks. I thought was quite clever. Um, <laughs> I don't she's, know. She sort of came alive on this, I think. Like, when she had to choose the thing and she was like going back to the shop and she was really excited. On, I think that's I, the gambler in her coming out. That felt like, because obviously she's... Uh, it was She's a gambler, a but also player. I think there was a bit of inner child there that enjoyed playing shops. Yeah. <laughs> and I think she and Alex, they both looked like two people who were really enjoying playing a game of shops. Yeah, definitely. It was quite a sweet moment there. Yeah. I think she also liked, got the sense she liked, that she had some respect for the task. Mm. The idea of time as currency. Yeah. She, was, she seemed happy there. And yeah, she didn't seem to mind chucking some stuff. I and think blue. we're going to see... She got it, didn't she? She got the dart. She got it. She did. It was so it. satisfying to watch. Yeah. The, and in slow motion as well, the water just holding in oh, the it's air. it's a beauty, yeah. And she was jubilant part. afterwards. Yeah. So, and so she should have been. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to see her introducing a few more things like this on Only Connect. <laughs> <laughs> a few more water-filled balloons. Yeah. And giant I think scissors. When, yeah, when people pick the... Griffin question or whatever it is. I don't really concentrate when it's on because I don't. I'm not. Sure, just start throwing rubber ducks at them. Yeah. She's got her eye in now. <laughs> See how well they can think when they're having red ducks pelted at their forehead. Yeah, yeah, I'd watch that. Um, yeah, she a great job from her. So I think, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think she's possibly more of a competitor than she revealed so far in the episode. Mm. Um, Guz absolutely hilarious in this again. Um, pretty <laughs> much has a go with everything. Uh, and I think maybe another highlight of the episode uh, was the slingshot <laughs> breaking oh, God. And snapping into his <laughs> face. It doesn't seem so far that Guz is someone who has copious amounts of luck no. on his side. 
generally no. speaking, I would say. No, he's definitely. got the energy, you know, and he's funny and he's intelligent, but I maybe he's just gonna get hamstrung by just being an unlucky sod. I think the I but I think the universe knows that Guz is at his funniest when things are going slightly wrong. Maybe that's what um, it is, yeah. So yeah, when he's just exclaiming and and really pissed off. I think he's so funny. Finding the, ba- like the balloon that will not burst, even though it definitely should burst. Right? Because yeah. that was pretty good. The getting this, you know, shooting the slingshot with a pebble and it hitting Bang the balloon. On. I was like, I couldn't aim like that. That's Dennis no. the Menace level. And it, <laughs> and it didn't burst at all. But the thing is, I mean, again, that's the definition of madness, isn't it? To keep going with that, to keep firing stone after stone, even <laughs> though you know it's not going to penetrate the balloon. You've basically in this. You've got to go darts, or you've got to go scissors straight away. You've got to be good at darts, or you've got to you've got to do what Alan did and use the scissors. Um, it looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. But even the darts, the darts didn't always work. I feel like a dart bounced off. Someone had a darts ba- bounce bounce oh, really? off. Really? Well, it's unfair. It's very that. unfair. I mean, Morgana yeah. used the darts. Ducks. I uh, people using the ducks are insane. Uh, that's just that's madness to try and use a duck. And I think even, I mean, you said that someone, I think Victoria would use it as a kind of a sort of pathfinder, you know. But I out. did, did she actually, or was that her I don't know, afterwards because that, I think throwing a duck feels quite different to throwing a dart, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, even if you're throwing it the same thing, it's quite. Yeah. <laughs> darts players tend to use darts to practice. They do, well, exactly. Yeah. As, as far as I understand, yes. They don't go, I'm going to get my eye small... I'm going to get my eye in with a rubber duck. Yeah. <laughs> Um, again, Morgana went for the scissors eventually, uh, but it racked up 56 minutes on the clock for her. Yeah, there was um, absolute chaos before then. Yeah, total chaos. Yes. Desiree chaos. had the interesting technique of um, using literally everything. Yeah, yeah. She uh, yeah, she eclipsed Morgana's chaos. Bucket I mean, of forks. A bucket so of forks. So pleased to see a bucket of forks. I love a bucket of forks. Just going. I mean, they definitely had to go and get more fork. <laughs> Just saying, how many forks do you have? Bring me that bucket of forks. That'll cost you an hour. Yep, let's do it. And she knew the forks didn't work at that point, so she truly lost it. She completely lost it. Multiple multiple forks thrown at the same time, just in yeah. case that was the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the increasingly exasperated ding-dongs, because she'd established the rhythm that she was going to say ding-dong every time she walked through the shop door. <laughs> and by the end, it's going, ding-dong! She also was quite enjoying playing a game of shops, I thought. I think so, yeah. yeah. I think so. Um, yeah, just using everything, absolutely incredible. Um, and then the final insult, using the scissors, and the colours <laughs> not coming down immediately. And Alex just losing it laughing. There's multiple times in this task where Alex either does the clipboard face cover, which is, yeah. a, if you see that during a task, you know you're doing very badly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or just openly laughs at them. And that... That portcullis not coming down is a perfect moment. That was cold, wasn't it? That was cold. Hello, madam. Ding dong, sir. How can I help you? You know what? Can I get some scissors? Some scissors, yes. We've got one pair left. They cost eight minutes. <laughs> no. oh, it would have been great if I could have aimed the scissors. Are you kidding me? I've the clock. Does the clock still have time inside of it? It's nearly run out. Thank you, Desiree. Thank you. The first live task. It's a good. It's a good live task. Um, oh. I think this is the sort of live task I might have done all right at. Um, and there's not many of those. Uh, I think you would have been great at this as well, Mike. Although maybe it's a tough one, isn't it? Because if you've seen the show ever, you know. You know that first part of the task. You know that's not it. There's no way that's exactly. it. Exactly. So you've no got to go just... simple. Yeah. When you write down your cool hobby, fun animal, and a famous person, you know at some point, if you go silly with that, it's There's going to come back and bite you on the ass. There's a catch, but then you've only got 10 seconds. So this is why I had some sympathy with Victoria, because this is the sort of thing where I think Victoria would have known there's a catch here. Something's going on yes. here. But what is the yeah. catch? Because yeah. she's only got 10 seconds Yeah. to come I mean, up with what that catch is, and you've just got to write something down. But I think that, Alan Alex really got, that. Alan went, you know, Alan's an he old He really screwed himself over in a big he way. He screwed here. himself over massively. <laughs> There's a task in series six yeah. where they have to write down, I think it's animals. Mm. And then the next part of the team task is they have to act out the animals to their, uh, yeah. to yeah, their yeah. teammates. And yeah. 
it's one of my favourite ever Taskmaster moments where Asim Chowdhury just writes down loads of nonsense animals to take the piss. <laughs> And then when he gets read out the second part of the task, the look on his face is fucking amazing that he knows he's got to do like blue elephant and all of this. <laughs> oh man. And Alan sort of does the same thing with uh, surf origami and uh, the, Zabr- the Zabronki. I think it's the Zabronki. Zabronki. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but again, he doesn't care. He doesn't I met, care uh, at this all. Is, this is probably not for the podcast, but I, I, I met Asim over the summer for the first time. Yeah. Uh, he was stuck halfway down a flume. <laughs> it was in. I, think, uh, I think it bothered. It was in uh, South Devon, a place called Paynton, where someone has mm. had the genius idea to have a swimming pool, but not to get rid of the swimming pool and just have the flumes. It's just right. flumes. Yeah. So it's a smash hit for the yeah. kids. And in one of these, they're, they're these big old ones where you have to go down on a rubber ring, and there's these little sort of little pools halfway through where you stop in a little pool, and then you go down the next bit of the flume. Yeah. And I was halfway down in one of these splash pools, and who was there? Who'd, for, who'd lost his ring and therefore wasn't quite sure how to get down the rest of the flume? It's only Taskmaster's, Taskmaster's Asim Chowdhury. We'd never met before. Did oh, you say hello? Yeah, of course we said hello. We had a nice little chat. <laughs> I still had my rubber ring, though. Yeah. So, so I was you, able to... I was straight able to, away, you... Eventually, by the end of the chat, I was able to leave and join my family. He was stuck there. Oh, he's still there. Poor Asim. He could be. Um, well, you say that's not for the podcast. That's the first. My first note is that absolutely is for the podcast. <laughs> and hopefully, we can have him on this podcast, and I'll ask him exactly. Uh, I'll say, where did you first meet Mike Wozniak? How we got out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no, he'll be doing. Uh, I'd imagine he'll on be doing Zoom from, from the from, uh, the splash yeah, from Splashdown Painton. Yeah, <laughs> coming from live from the flumes. <laughs> they closed for the winter now. So it's a little chilly. Um, I think Morgana was at an advantage here because she's. I think she's a very strong performer. Um, oh man, yeah, yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, she can do anything. Yeah, she can strike poses, voice-wise, physically. Yeah, yeah, gets her Cheryl Cole in straight, and she away. loves it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, she's, yeah. So she's completely in her element. Victoria and Alan. I think this is as I expect it to to uh, <laughs> come out. One point, one point for Victoria. One point for Alan. She Three also completely screwed well. herself, but not in the same way. Alan's just mucking about, right? He's mucking yeah, Alan about, and he gives care. himself a Zabrunki or whatever it is, and, you know, yeah, and surf gummy, can... which is very funny, but he's completely stuffed and doesn't mind. And the nation is happy. Tony Hart, I think, was his celebrity, wasn't yes, he? Yes, Tony Hart, yes. <laughs> of course. Um, and Victoria screws herself over in a different way by uh, choosing John Craven. John Cra- uh, Tony Hart and John Craven. I mean, they're, I mean they're, they are both celebrities that... Greg will be familiar with. There'll be huge swathes of the Taskmaster public. Yeah. Be like, who and who? <laughs> Guy's absolutely uh, nailed it with his uh, with his uh, yeah. celebrity. Yeah, he did pick the perfect, um, one of the only celebrities to have uh, a silhouette, a proper silhouette. You and know? one of the only that you could put that in any any game show, any quiz show, any task show, any yeah. contest in the world. And yeah. everyone knows what the answer is. It's really only yeah. Jesus or Hitler, isn't it? Those are the only two choices for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank I wonder God if they no had to stop the, the show and ask someone to pick something different. Um, it would have done if I was on. Uh, <laughs> so, Guz, three points. Desiree, three points. Victoria and Alan, one point each. And Morgana gets the big five, meaning she wins this first episode of Series 12. But it's yeah. obviously pretty close. Um so there's no one really streaking ahead. It was uh, quite tight, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. The scores. 17, 16, 15, 14, 12. Victoria's mm. in the bottom, but only by two points. Um, so it's all out there to win. Um, you've given us a little clue on, as to who you think might come out victorious, but let's have your official prediction now after episode one, Mike. Well, because I, cause I know her and I, I love her, Mog, Mog is my personal fave. So I'm, mm-hmm. um, that's, that's who I'm putting my fiver on. And I think, I think that's a good choice. I think she, I think she could make it. I think, I think when it comes out in the wash, I think the the final two are going head to head. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be Morgana and Victoria. That's what I think is going to happen. Nice. Okay. And I think, uh, Guz and Desiree will just be having a lovely old time. Yeah. Mucking about in the middle somewhere. Yeah. Probably having spectacular moments and spectacular failures and the odd pyrrhic victory. And that's yeah. going to be brilliant. And I think Alan is going to be languishing gloriously at the back. <laughs> and I think I think that separation is going to happen quite soon. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, let's keep an eye out for that. Yeah. The, I'm uh, going to enjoy every minute of it. Yeah. Oh, God, I can't wait. We've got some emails here, Mike. Uh, okay. This was a great. This was a great question. I thought actually, and one that I might, I might actually take this question as like a uh, as a bit of a template and ask all all our guests this. Um, hi Ed, I hope you're doing great. Could you please ask Mike the following question? If you were the taskmaster, Mike, um, mm. who would be your little Alex Horn? And you cannot say Alex Horn. Thanks for a great podcast. Have a lovely day. Your Czech fan, Blanca. Thanks, Blanca. Ooh. I think that's a very hard question. It's a very, very good question. Alex himself is quite sort of irreplaceable in a way. So probably, I'd probably get one of those bots and uh, fill it up with uh, Alex with as much Alex Horn as I could, and uh, have the Al- A- Alex Horn bot three thousand. So you'd have like an app, basically, an Alex Horn app. I'd have a little robot, essentially. Yeah, yeah. a little ro- like an iPad on a, on some wheels. Yeah, basically, yeah. Something with, give it a little face and everything. Yeah. And um, probably tiny little caterpillar tracks I'd go for rather than sort of normal wheels. Um, probably one one arm with a little sort of pin- pincer on it. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, so I mean, it can... makes some of the tasks trickier, I think. Oh yeah, but I think that would be that would be our USP, really. Yeah, what tricky task? Like quite poorly managed admin. by a, yeah, yeah, poorly by managed. A, yeah, 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 quite by a robot with some very basic AI in it. Yeah, yeah, good. Basically. Um, if they do uh, have to find a new taskmaster, it can't it can't be you because then the show will die, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Email two, dear Mike, do you still keep in touch with the other contestants? Thanks, by Rachel in Manchester. Yes, yes. Is there a group, a WhatsApp group? There was an obs- there was a brief obscene <laughs> WhatsApp group that only that wasn't that wasn't everybody, but there was there were reasons behind that that I can't go into. <laughs> Initiated by Sarah, being, yeah, being revolting, right? Uh, but I have the only one I have. I've seen them all. Yeah, I've seen them all. I'm in in touch. Yeah, yeah. There's been a couple of socials here and there. Sometimes That's it's nice. been sort of a work based thing where we've crossed paths again. But there has been a couple of social things here and there, which has been rather lovely. Yeah, it's a shame if there's a social amongst the Taskmaster series. You really should take a photo of it and put it on social media, Mike. <laughs> is that what you're supposed to do now? You're supposed to do that, yeah. I you're think to tell everyone when you're supposed to tell everyone whatever you're doing, please. Where you are. <laughs> yes, exactly where you are at all times. And um, why? Yeah. That's life. Um <laughs> Hi Ed and Mike. I was wondering how long Mike kept his amazing Mohawk for after series eleven. It was probably the cherry on top of probably the best series of no, ignore all that. Just did you keep your mo did you keep your Mohawk? Wait, Mike? you kind of sort of have to or is that all go to full skinhead, right? That was the only Yes, I guess choice. that was the only other option. Um, which this I is elected from... not to do because I've tried that before a very long time ago and I've got a head shaped like a pencil sharpener, which is even <laughs> worse than the <laughs> mohawk. Plus, it was kind of... it was We were still in the, the throes of the, of the hot pandemic, but we'd had a bit of lockdown easing, like school was back, that kind of thing. It was in September, I think. Mm. So there wasn't a lot going on, a lot to do. So at home, my hair became something to do. <laughs> Right, so yeah, my children wanted to. They, they, they gave, I got a series of haircuts from them. For example, I wasn't right. allowed to do it myself. They wanted to yeah. muck about with it and you know trim it down and do what they could. And uh, I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't. It was really gross. It was really gross. Yeah, sort of flopping about. I was a bit relieved when it started to get a bit shorter. Yeah, but it was a good couple of months before it looked anything like remotely normal. I would say. Yeah, I mean, how. how yeah, keeping a mohawk. There were difficult. mohawk elements for for weeks and weeks. Afterwards. Yeah, but yeah. you weren't main, you didn't maintain the mohawk. Not in not in full bloom. No, no. It was a sort of floppy mohawk for Imagine a bit. If you just thought you did it and you were like, oh, it's sort of my thing now. In the privacy of my own home, yes, there would be times when my children would instruct me to get in the bath and they'd start, you know, doing whatever they wanted with it. Yeah, because yeah. in a way, the mohawk of me. suits you because of your lovely moustache. It's sort of a moustache for the head, isn't it? <laughs> It's just a vertical head moustache yeah. is all it it's is, a, really. It's a big head moustache. Yeah. Um, that was from uh, Latchy in Melbourne. Thank you. I'm no. uh, sorry if I'm, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, they also said Series 11 is the best series of Taskmaster, but yeah. I tried to ed- edit that out. Um, <laughs> it was fine. 
Um, dear Mike and Ed, do you think having a pre-existing friendship with Greg is an advantage or a disadvantage? That's from Derek in Chicago. Disadvantage. He makes all the more certain that he's going to show you no mercy, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think... I mean, he even I tells you that explicitly before the show. Yeah. <laughs> it's right in your face, wags one of his enormous fingers <laughs> in front of your eyeballs. Just don't even think about... Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd, say it's, I'd say it's both, so it sort of balances out to just being as if you didn't know him. Because he really likes to make his friends angry um, and do funny, mean things to his friends. But then also <laughs> I think you've got a direct connection to his sense of humour and a similar sense of humour, which probably works out as an advantage sometimes in tasks, is what I'd say. There is also that knowing him ahead of time, I think, made me, lo- more, made me more likely to be singled out for yeah. the solo task of my series. Ah, yes. And... Were that not the case, life could be quite different for me now. Yeah, you know. So yeah, that you've got. That I mean, you've. I'm who changed. would have known, Mike? I'm a that changed what man. Took you up to the next level of fame in your career would be you blowing a grape out of your ass trying to fart <laughs> on, on a private jet. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I just wish my old grandma was still around to have seen it. Oh. Um, there's something about you being the undisputed number one favourite Taskmaster contestant of all time, but I want to read that out. Um, <laughs> they also, in the same email, said, how does it feel to be a certified DILF? That's from James Jesus. in Newcastle. How does that feel, Mike? <laughs> how does that feel to be a certified DILF? I don't know where your certificate is. It must be on, on the way. It's probably <laughs> in the post. You have to carry it on you at all times. It's a yes. little sort of photo card. Yeah, yeah. laminated photo card. Yeah, so you can um, show it to people and go just to just to let you know. I if you're think thinking you wouldn't L to F me, you you do just, L to F me because I'm going to certify Dill. <laughs> I would say it is just a little reminder that all tastes are out there <laughs> for everybody, and sometimes we might be surprised by what yeah. people go for. Uh, but oh, what a patchwork quilt we are! It's an eye opener. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, hi, Ed. Please can you ask Mike, what TikTok time o'clock is it currently? Kind regards, Catherine. <laughs> TikTok, it's fresh faces o'clock. Lovely. <laughs> Mike, thank you so much for coming back uh, on the Taskmaster podcast to kick Thanks off for me. Uh, the Series 12 chats. Um, as always, uh, we need your score out of five for your experience on the Taskmaster podcast. So as not to infuriate you, I'm going to give you a fulsome five. I think last thank time I gave you a six, much. didn't I? Just to wind you up. I'm not going to yes. do that to you. No. Okay. No, thank you. I'll take the five and I'll be very you're a happy nice with boy. that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Five, five points for being a nice boy. Five. Yeah. And a five points to you for being a lovely boy. <laughs> the anus of a home county's flower bed. Mike Wozniak, see you again sometime soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye. There we are. Great stuff from Mike. Thanks for coming on again, Mike. You're welcome back anytime. The rest of you, keep watching Taskmaster 9pm Channel 4 every Thursday. Catch up on all four afterwards. And don't forget, you can now buy the new Taskmaster book, Bring Me the Head of the Taskmaster, online or from your local bookshop. And you've got to find the head. You follow those tasks, you're going to find some Taskmaster treasure. And I want it, I, I want keep in contact. Tell us how you're doing on the podcast. I'll read the emails. And if they're interesting, I'll read them out. The email address is taskmasterpodcast at gmail.com. That's for questions. That's for Bring Me the Head of the Taskmaster updates. We would love to hear from you. But for now, I will see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>